Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and kind of show you guys the new Glacial Cascade gem. Uh, it was reworked a little bit and basically all they did to it was they essentially made it a pure physical spell now. So it's kind of like EK and Bladefall, for example. But it takes 60% of the physical damage and converts it over to cold, which means you only need 40% to get a full elemental conversion. So you can use things like, uh, for example, Hrim Sorrow, or you could spec into like Winter Spirit, or you could use like Cold to Lightning. Uh, there's a couple other ways as well to kind of play around with that. But I wanted to show you guys my build because I am playing a Scion. And unfortunately, I can't really show you the full build because uh, we only have two Labyrinths available for us right now, which means I can't start as a Ranger, which is what I kind of need for my build. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys that after. So I wanted to show you guys a little bit of kind of how the, the skill gem plays. So I'm currently running Ellie Focus, Glacial Cascade, Faster Casting, Control Destruction, Cold Pen, and Spell Echo. And just for the sake of this, I'll pull out like, I don't know, let's remove like Faster Casting. And let's remove like uh, some penetration here. So we're on a, a nice simple four link as well. Now I'm using a sword and shield as well for leveling. I've got the princess, which gives us 29. So up to 30% of physical damage as extra cold and Calton heart, which gives us 15% as extra cold. This is just so I can shield charge and move around. Uh, princess gives some attack speed, which is pretty nice as well. Um, so that was kind of cool. Just, it kind of makes leveling a bit easier. All right. So everything on the character was honestly a breeze. Um, I never really had an issue with anything. Damage was never really an issue. Now, of course, this is just leveling. Um, this character specifically may come into damage issues like later on, but like early mapping and everything should be like literally no problem. Um, because when you have conversion spells like this, it's a lot easier to scale them. So like now that, now that Glacial Cascade basically works like this, I could use Wise Oak, for example and get the penetration. I can use a, a uh, cold penetration support gem, which gives me pen uh, penetration. I can use Taste of Hate, which is actually ridiculous for the build. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things that you can kind of mess around with nowadays. I don't feel stink bear, man. Oh, nice slack spike, though. Anyway, though, I wanted to mainly show you guys my skill tree because I think that's way more appealing than just kind of killing mobs with a basic skill. So the reason why I kind of made this video is because I think that the skill tree is a little bit unique uh, since I've never, I don't really play Scions very often. I played Scion when it first came out because it was really good and then it kind of went to poo-poo and then yeah. So if you guys watched some of my previous videos, you'll see I kind of made a little bit of a video going over this character. So this Scion specifically, the choice or the reason why we decided to go Scion is because we can actually grab Elementalist here, which gives us 50% reduced reflect or Elemental Reflect, which is actually really good for pretty much any type of spell build uh, that has to do with Ellie Reflect. 6% Penetration, that's pretty good, right? We're now 100% converted over to Cold. Uh, gain Elemental Conflux for 6 seconds when you kill a rare or unique enemy, which is okay, right? We get a free uh, Chill. I don't know actually if the chill will work if you have Ellie Focus. I don't play Elementalist too often, but uh, um, so I'm not sure if Conflux applies with Ellie Focus. I'm going to assume it doesn't. So whatever if that doesn't work. But you also get the one additional Golem, which is pretty cool because that means we could use like Lightning Golem and uh, Fire Golem or Lightning Golem and something else. So basically, that's it's just kind of nice to have. Mini K, come here. You want to come up here, buddy? Mini K wanted to see the new uh, Glacial Cascade gem. Isn't that right, buddy? You can sit right here. All right, so the other, uh, I guess the main reason as well, is we can subclass into Raider, which Raider gives us 10% movement speed, which is pretty much good at all times. 4% chance to dodge, which is negligible. It's just something, it's whatever. You have Onslaught while on full frenzy charges. Now, Onslaught is really good because it's 20% attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed, which basically means the Raider passive gives me 30% increased movement speed, and 10% chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a rare or unique enemy. So on bosses, this is going to be 100% of the time, which means we always have our movement speed up 100% of the time, which is really good. Um, for mapping, I'm going to assume this is going to be up majority of the time, unless I'm like insta-giving the rares. But in that scenario, I'm still moving pretty fast, so I should be able to go from pack to pack. Um, also, if I'm running things like Beyond, I'm pretty sure this will be on 100%. But the main reason as well is to subclass into the Path of the Ranger, which you can see here. And let's kind of talk about that. So... 
By going into Ranger, I get access to the Evasion and Life nodes, which is good because the new Cloak of Defiance... Or if I, I'll just pull up the old one, it's still okay. Cloak of Defiance... So, Cloak of Defiance currently gives, uh, you can see the stats right here, but after the buff, I'm not really going to show the, the buffed one, but if you guys want to know like a little bit of what happened is, they, I believe they increased the evasion, they doubled the mana so it goes up to like 250, um, you also get 1% mana regen per second, and you have an additional 20% on top of the Mind Over Matter, basically it's a 50% conversion piece. But... Uh, these nodes here are going to scale with it because you get a little bit of evasion off it. You also get the life bonus, which is kind of like the primary part. Um, finesse is okay. It's mainly just for some, I don't know, like the dexterity. It's nothing really too special. But you do get access to Primal Spirit, which gives you mana regen. Um, flash charge is gained. Strength and intelligence. Maximum mana. You get mana off the baby node. Heart of the Oak would give you a chance to avoid being stunned. 1% life regen. And then you would get like your nice fatty maximum life. Then you can come down here, you get additional mana scaling with Druidic Rite. However, Druidic Rite also gives 20% flask effect duration, which is really good for things like Basalt Flasks, Wise Oak, well, Wise Oak is pretty much always on, Taste of Hate, uh, you know, etc. We can also go ahead and move over to the right, which gives us Winter Spirit. And Winter Spirit is super cool because we get 40% physical converted to cold, which is exactly what Glacial Cascade needs meaning I don't have to use a support gem or I don't have to use like Rimsaw or anything. Uh, I get it pretty much for free by doing it like this. And then we'd also get Flash Freeze here, which I don't really think I need too much. It's just, it's basically like 32% uh, increased damage for two points, which is like, what, 16% effectiveness? We also get Herbalism, and then we can um, come up and grab Fervor and Jewel Socket. Then from the regular Scion, we can branch through Mana, um, grab Path of the Savant, totally optional. Same thing with grabbing Harrier, totally optional. Uh, move down, grab our life nodes in here. Path of the Warrior is not bad. 12% physical plus 20 strength. The strength converts into flat health. Uh, we've got some additional life nodes to pick up here. Come up through Shaper. We've got a Jewel Socket. Quick Recovery. Um, inspiration with our Mind Over Matter because these nodes are still insane. 12% mana, 12% mana. 100 flat mana and 40% increased maximum. So even if you're going Mind Over Matter or Cloak of Defiance, you still pretty much want to grab this node. We can move across here. Remember, we are 100% conversion now, so Stormweaver is not that bad. Uh, it's an 8% node, a 10% node, then a 25% with some mono regen, so it's okay. Uh, this gives us access to Purity of Flesh. Then we can move down into the Templar side, grab the AoE, grab our Elementalist, Retribution, Discipline and Training. You can even grab Precision if you want for some additional movement speed and stuff. Um, come down through here, Devotion. I do have access to Celestial Judgment, and punishment. I don't know if I'm going to get them. I usually don't. Then uh, we get overload or elemental overload by going through the witch. We also get deep thoughts and cruel preparation, jewel socket, alchemist. So we get like pretty much all the flask nodes on the fucking tree, uh, with the exception of like some of the flask life ones like here. Um, yeah, and then we branch through AoE. We we get the uh, deep wisdom, and that's pretty much the build. <clears throat> You can also alternatively grab the AoE inside if you want to do like a max AoE variant. And as of right now, it's 190% life with 180% mana, which should total to about, I don't know, anywhere from like, I'm going to rough ball 8 to 12k effective life. Um, you can also use like Essence Worm Hatred. Um, you could just run a basic Arctic Armor. There's kind of like quite a few elements you can play around with. Uh, since we've never really dealt with mana conversion builds of this high of a value, I do need to play it really to figure out exactly like what I want my thresholds to be with maximum mana and whatnot, and kind of like what uniques I'm going to go ahead and use. Right now I'm using Mind Spiral. I don't know if I'm going to use Mind Spiral later on, but it's not bad. Like the flat mana is really good along with the cold damage is really good. And the 6% of damage da or taken gained as mana is really good. So those are all kind of pretty good about like effects on there. The maximum mana as ES is pretty nice, but... Unfortunately, you can't really always make use of it. This is kind of more niche uh, with that effect, but it still doesn't mean I can't use Mind Spiral, for example. Um, yeah, I was also thinking of using like a Pledge of Hands. Pledge of Hands gives level 30 Echo. I can actually boot or pull it up for you guys here. But it also gives a 100% increased maximum mana. So we get 160, 100% increased max mana, up to 160% spell damage, 
and a level 30 Echo Gem, which basically means that we get an extra link, which means we could use Ink AoE with Cold Pen, uh, or we could potentially use one of the new supports that are coming out in one of the next patches, uh, if we're able to. Anyway, though, that's pretty much the character that I wanted to run down you guys with. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you guys think Scion is totally worthless in this case. Uh, I know a lot of people are just going to say, like, well, couldn't you just go Inquisitor or do this or do that? And the answer is, of course, you could always do Inquisitor and you could do this. But, you know, realistically, everyone could also just play Vol Spark and Vol Fireball, but then there would be no customization in the game, right? The whole point is to kind of create, like, flexible builds that will work in a lot of different scenarios. So anyway, like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time, and I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.